Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you don't already, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe and please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Aside from that though, I wanted to talk about something a little bit more serious than what I would usually talk about on channel and that is body dysmorphia. It is something that I have, something that I am not confident about talking about so I'm really nervous to do this video. So if you find me saying mm, eh, a lot, you know why. It's going to be a bit of a long video. It's something that I've really wanted to talk about for a while and I know that a lot of people go through it and don't necessarily go and get help or get treatment or anything like that and so I think talking about it is something that will help a lot of people and I know there's not a huge amount of people talking about it online so I thought that I would do my part and just sort of put it out there and hopefully the video helps somebody. It would be really great if it would start a conversation. That's what I would ultimately love is just for people to be able to talk about it. Um, so feel free to share your comments or experiences in the comments below and yeah, let's just get cracking with the video. So just as a wee bit of a background, I have got body dysmorphia. Um, I've had it for a very long time. It started when I was in primary school. So if you're not aware of what primary school is, it's like a, the, the school that you go to from the ages of 5 and 12 years old. And from there it started to creep in. So I would say that I started to feel self-conscious and body aware um, at a very young age because I was teased because of my way and the way that I looked. I had huge big glasses and yeah, just typical primary school stuff, like really just a load of nonsense. It wasn't bullying, it was just being teased and uh, instead of me sort of shrugging it off like a lot of children would have done at that time, I really focused on it and it sort of became a part of who I was and it just went from there. So you're not born with body dysmorphia. That's a common thing that a lot of people think. People think, well, why do some people have it and some people don't? They must have something in their brain that makes them do that. Yeah, I'm sure they do. But um, I'm not really sure the science behind it. So I don't want to start talking like I'm a doctor because I'm not. I just want to talk about my experience and answer some questions. So the first thing, obviously, that a lot of people want to know is what is body dysmorphia? And what's the difference between body dysmorphia and feeling self-conscious, um, which is a big, there is a, a fine line, but also there is quite a drastic difference. Um, body dysmorphia is something that makes you focus on how you appear. So, for example, a lot of people who have body dysmorphia focus on their weight. Um, they might focus on if they have a slight squint in their eye. They might focus on their teeth. They might focus on their hair. It might be acne. It might be something like that. But a lot of people go from one thing to the next, but hyper focus on it. Not just to the point where they feel self conscious about it. They like hyperly focus on it to the point where it consumes their day, their life, relationships, and yeah, it just it really has consumed who they are as a person. Has defined. A lot of their characteristics in life. So for example, um, for me, I can only speak on behalf of myself. Mine came from initially from my weight and a lot of people would say, okay fine, lose some weight, lose the body dysmorphia. doesn't really work that way because I have lost 35 pounds at the moment and obviously I still have a ways to go but having body dysmorphia and losing 35 pounds I thought that I would feel a lot different to what I do now. It has helped me in so many ways losing the weight and I will continue with my journey but in terms of body dysmorphia it hasn't really changed an awful lot um, and I'll give you an example of that. So for example before I had lost the weight I was consumed with the fact that I needed to lose weight I was consumed with the fact that I had a double chin. I was, I still do. And I was consumed with my stomach, with every single thing that was fat. And now that I've lost 35 pounds, I'm consumed with loose skin. <laughs> you just go from one thing to the next. And no matter what you do, there's always going to be something else that you find that you're not going to be happy with because it's human nature. We all look for the next thing. And I think particularly in the case of somebody who has body dysmorphia, you hyperly focus on finding that next thing. You never feel good enough. And I think that's the key is that you never feel good enough. So for example, I could be in town with my friends and family just having a laugh and I could see somebody walking past me and who would be laughing with their friends 
who has nothing to do with me, who has never even looked at me, and I will automatically assume in my mind, and it sounds crazy, that they are talking and laughing about me and because I'm so fat and ugly and that's body dysmorphia. Obviously it's not one size fits all and it's different for an awful lot of people but for me that's what it's like. I am absolutely obsessed with um, not being good enough and a lot of people would think it, body dysmorphia is a vanity thing or being self-obsessed or maybe just having low self-esteem and while those may well be the case for some people this is an extreme so it's something that completely consumes your life it's not something that you say because you want to get attention so sometimes you might see on social media someone say oh my god I'm so fat and then people comment no you're not oh my god you look absolutely amazing and some people that person that has posted it might or may not have done it just to get you know a little bit of attention they may have had a down day and we're just looking for a bit of a pick-me-up but there's nothing wrong with that's not really the case with people who have body dysmorphia if i post a picture of myself on social media i can assure you it's probably taken 100 pictures to get to that point i have had to re like this is a, the the process of taking a selfie for me for example if i'm taking a selfie i'll go up really close to the camera and i'll dip my head the shadows that come in from my hair um, chisel in my face shape so I always have to have my hair down my fringe sort of like that because I like to make my forehead look smaller it all sounds crazy I apologize and I do this with my hair this shape to make my cheeks look bigger and this part look smaller <laughs> it sounds crazy and a lot of you are going to be saying you're absolutely crazy but I, I it's just the truth. My face is quite round. I'm, I'm quite accepting to that. So I always have my mouth slightly open to elongate my face. I always dip my head ever so slightly to get rid of the double chin, as you can see. So if you just sort of dip your face and angle it a little bit, it's better than... <laughs> it's so crazy. This is just the process of taking a selfie and I always have my lighting on. I don't filter. I've tried so hard to stop filtering. I used to do so many Snapchat filters and um, different filters but I don't do them anymore. It's just part of um, my recovery or being able to control my body dysmorphia. Um, but yeah that's the process that I would go through for taking a selfie and it would go on like that for ages. I would have to have full on hair and makeup done before I would take one or at least be managed to a safe extent. So for me, a safe extent is being able to hide my face. <laughs> That's something that I would have to do. Um, and it all sounds so crazy to tell you. I mean, it sounds ridiculous. And that's why I get so nervous to talk about it. But I know that so many people have it and it's important to talk about it. So that's why I'm kind of forcing myself. So a fact about body dysmorphia is that one in 50 people have been diagnosed with it. So it makes it quite common. One in 50 people, you could be walking through the street and you could probably walk past 200 people and know that four of those people may have it. Um, and those are just the people that have been diagnosed. So a lot of people who have it probably don't go and get treatment. I know that it took me a long time to and I actually have got friends who have it um, and don't go and get help or treatment and who aren't really necessarily diagnosed with it but do have it. It's one of the lesser known mental illnesses if you like um but having body dysmorphia leads to other things so for example if you are hyper focused on yourself it can lead to being anxious about going out in social occasions so for example if i was going out to a night out with my friends it would take me at least a week of hyper focusing on what i'm going to wear how I'm going to style my hair, what makeup I'm going to wear, how I'm going to make my teeth look whiter, la 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 My mind just screams at me about the way that I look. And that's not me being self-obsessed because I never, ever, ever, ever think that I look good, ever, in a million years, never. Um, but, oh, yes, that's just that's just how it is. That's, I don't know how to vocalise that. I'm struggling with it a little bit, but that is how I feel and I know that a lot of people feel when it comes to body dysmorphia so at least to anxiety it's something that makes you not want to leave the house um, because it is a repetitive um, illness if you like mental illness I don't I hate saying those words um, 
because of that, it can make you a bit compulsive. So OCD also comes into that too. And obviously depression too. And I say obviously because it is something that is upsetting and it's something that makes you feel worthless and lowers your self-esteem. And those are all traits of somebody who gets depression. And that is something that you have to think about. I know personally that it does drag me down, but I'm very fortunate to have people around me who are supportive and understanding of the situation and who help to bring me up. And because I've had it for a long time, I also am able to control it to a certain extent and maybe stop it from ruining my everyday life. But it did for a really long time. And it has affected relationships and will continue to affect relationships to the point of view that whether that relationship is with your family or whether it's with another hat with your like a boyfriend or whether it's with um your friends or whatever else it does affect it because ultimately your self obsession with the way you look distracts you from other areas in your life and um yeah that's how it affects the relationships I'm so nervous. I apologise again. Whew. So another common question is, how do you know you have body dysmorphia and not just um, just somebody who has low self-esteem or body confidence issues? And the answer to that is, you, it's, it's difficult because there is a fine line. Um, somebody who has low self-esteem and body confidence issues will have good days and bad days um, who will be able to say, okay, yes, my weight is out of control, but I can manage it by doing this and I'm quite happy with myself after that. Um, people with body dysmorphia will always look for the next thing to be, to focus on and to hate about themselves and will never, ever, ever feel good enough. And that's how I feel. I never feel good enough. And that sucks. It really does suck regardless of what you do. I, I find myself overcompensating by being overly nice to people or... Um, by doing a lot for charity and by trying to be supportive to people and trying to be liked in other aspects of my life so that I'm not judged by my looks but yet I'm the only one that's judging my looks if that makes sense and I think that's a defining point by, is it goes by how much of your life it consumes so if you can't stop thinking about it which is my my everyday life that's body dysmorphia whereas if it's something that you struggle with like oh I don't know what I'm going to wear on a night out because I hate the way I look or uh, I can't get my hair cut any shorter because it makes my face look round that's yeah of course that's hard it's really hard to feel so um down on yourself and to not have self-esteem or body confidence of course that sucks but there's a big difference between that and having body dysmorphia um, and it goes by and is measured by how much of your life it consumes so I hope that makes sense I'm kind of raveling I'm just so nervous and I'm trying my best here I really am so I think something else that people want to know is how do you treat it um it's difficult because treating body dysmorphia there is no one size fits all it's it's like most things in life there is no one size fits all it's like anxiety and other mental health issues um everyone is different and will have different symptoms different outlooks different things that they want from themselves and some people will cope with different um treatments and therapies in terms of treatment you could take um, certain medications your doctor will be able to advise you on this obviously I'm not a doctor so don't listen to me too much but your doctor will be able to advise you on this and um, for the things I have been advised and um, the options to me were to go and have therapy or um, where to do some sort of behavioral therapy online as well those were options too and um, to deal with it myself and also medication was an option too uh, I I'm not keen on the medication route or anything like that but some people like to do it and I completely understand it so usually the medication that you would get would be a form of antidepressant and you would get a different dosage um, depending on how severe your case is so just because it is a form of antidepressant don't think that it is solely to treat depression it is to treat a multitude of different illnesses. Um, as I said the route that I 
choose to go down mostly is the behavioural route. So I note down um, things, the triggers, um, the situations, the times that I get most compulsive and obsessive about the way that I look and I try to avoid those situations or turn them into a positive rather than um, focusing on it and triggering from it. So from the trigger to the point, for example, when I say trigger to it, I would say that I then would start to get really panicky. I wouldn't want to leave the house. I wouldn't want to see people. I would have a set routine about hair removal, about when I do my false nails, about false eyelashes, about tan, about everything. I just, I have, it, it goes on non-stop. And what I would do at that point is kind of stop myself from going towards the triggers. Um, social media can be a trigger. <laughs> um, looking at people on Instagram, looking at people's ideal life, it can be a trigger. And it is for so many other people as well not just for me and I have to remember that sometimes it's not just me and I know that if you're watching this sometimes you feel like nobody could possibly understand what you're going through and nobody could know what's going on in your mind and I'm sure that's very true nobody can know what's going on in your mind but people can understand and people can relate to you because you're not the only one that's going through it and don't ever feel alone that's the worst part of any mental illness is the feeling of being alone and sucked into this vortex of darkness where there's no way out but there is a way out and it can be managed my life used to be consumed by body dysmorphia to the point where I wouldn't leave the house and because I hated myself so much and I was convinced that everybody else would too now I'm able to go out I have fun I laugh I drink I am a normal normal um, 31 year old girl and women <laughs> scares me a little bit but I'm a normal 31 year old woman and I can do normal everyday things without feeling like I want to cry every second of the day because I hate myself so much and everyone can get to that point where they can manage it it's all about how you choose to support yourself you know allow yourself some time to have some self-care allow yourself the opportunity to like yourself and that's something that I struggled with so much was being able to like myself and it's something that I work on all the time everyone has to everyone has to like it has to if you've got body dysmorphia you know that it's something you will have to work on it's not something that's gonna there's no magic potion it's never gonna just be here one day and gone the next you're gonna have to work on yourself but you can do it there's plenty of help available and it's not something that people are going to think you're crazy for having. Um, I hope that you don't think that I'm crazy and I'm already looking at myself in the viewfinder here. I can see myself in the, in the viewfinder and I'm pulling myself to pieces about how I look. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things I'm already not happy about and I'm trying my hardest not to nano focus on them. It's hard, it's difficult, but everyone has things in their life that they have to go through. But you don't have to go through them alone. And that's kind of why I wanted to have this conversation and talk about body dysmorphia. It's probably one of those videos that's all everywhere and will make no sense and has got no rhyme or rhythm to it and has no reason to help anyone. But I just want people to know that you're not the only one that's going through it and just because you see a happy girl on social media it's sometimes it's it's not real life sometimes it is sometimes it's not i feel different day to day minute by minute so yeah that it's just something that affects me it affects one in 50 people like i mentioned before and that's just the people that have been diagnosed with it officially so you're definitely not alone and i would love it absolutely love it if you just feel a little bit more open to discussing it and not so alone. I think that's the ideal thing that I can possibly hope for from this video. And it's not been easy to talk about. But I already feel a little bit like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Because I've started this video about 15-20 times at least. And I, I just... You know how sometimes you, you think 
I wonder if people are going to think that I'm crazy now. <laughs> I know that sounds so stupid. Um, but that's how I feel. <laughs> I still feel that way. I'm struggling a bit whether I'm going to upload this or not, but I'm going to try my absolute best just to power through when I'm editing this and just upload it and not overly edit and just go with it. And I encourage you to try the same thing. Whatever works for you, go for it. That's just, it's, it's different for everybody. Just do what helps you. Do more of what makes you happy, as the quote says. So, yeah, please talk about it. I will talk about it more on my channel if you want me to. In a much more um, formed video and much better laid out video. This is sort of everywhere because I'm just, I'm nervous and although I wrote down a whole load of points that I wanted to go through and I did go through them, they're kind of mumbled and jumbled everywhere. Um, so I hope that you don't mind that this video is long and that I've kind of rambled on for a good 20 minutes or whatever it is that the video is. I'll probably get cut down to about 12 or 13 minutes hopefully. And yeah, please feel free to ask me any questions you have. I will honestly answer as openly and honestly as I possibly can and I hope that you feel confident enough to talk about it with others and maybe from watching this video you can understand somebody else who has it and will maybe have a little bit of more knowledge in regards to what it is and after all the key to everything in life is education. <laughs> I'm talking crap. So I'm going to end the video here. Please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already but most importantly Please just let other people know that you're there for them and that you, they don't have to feel alone. That's all you can ask for is just to help people where you can and to be helped where you can. Allow yourself to take help because that's something that I struggle with. So just take the help where you can um, because you're worthy of it and you deserve it. So yes, I'm going to finish this video. Thank you so much for watching and please give me a thumbs up. I will see you again in the next video. Bye.